Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We'll be able to go into the Word of God, the Bible studies. Right now, as we'll be seeing evil days that happen, as we'll be seeing conversations that happen behind bars that we don't know, we can't figure out, that there are certain board meetings that are taking place in the heavenly with our names and questions. And now you on earth, you don't know what is happening. You don't know there was a board meeting going on. You don't know there was a cabinet meeting. You don't know there was a secret meeting going on and your name was being mentioned in the meeting. So right now we'll be seeing these things in the word of God, in the scripture. I'm just praying right now for the Holy Spirit to begin to open somebody's understanding. For the Holy Ghost to begin to speak to somebody as we have this brief moment in the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Father God, speak to us this day. Speak to somebody who may be going through a lot, who does not understand what is happening. Begin to grant them understanding. Oh God, those who have been shifted, begin to help them recover. Begin to bring them back on their feet in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Um, I'll be reading from the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 31. Luke chapter 22, it gives us a scenario of something happening to the man called Simon Peter. Simon Peter was a faithful disciple with Jesus Christ. He was a faithful disciple with Jesus, but little to his understanding that there are things beyond his comprehension. He thought that being a follower of Jesus, he understood everything going around Jesus. But Jesus shocked him. And when Jesus shocked him, he still played to be strong. He thought he had attained a certain level and everything would be okay. And then Jesus turned to him and he said, Luke chapter 22. Verse 31, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as a weed. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art convicted, strengthen thy brethren. Hallelujah. He says, Simon, Simon, Satan has desired. He says, Simon, you're talking right now, but there's a conversation going on in the realm of the spirit. There's a meeting between powers, between God and darkness that they want you, that they desire. Satan says, I want you. Satan says, Simon, Simon, I want you. Satan has come to God to say, Simon Peter, God, I need Simon Peter. I have a plan for Simon Peter. And I have a plan to save him like a weed. I have a plan to destroy him. And unknown to Simon Peter, he thought he has attained a certain level with God until he becomes infallible. But little did he know that, that in the behind, in the unseen realm, there are meetings that are going on. There are conversations that the enemy keep lurking, keep desiring, keep pointing, choosing out some people for destruction. You know, the Bible says, Jesus says, he says, you did not choose me. I chose you. That's how it is. You don't choose problems many times. You don't choose things to happen to you. But some of these things, they chose us. They sit and they choose us. Hallelujah. Let me start with this. I, 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 I am aware of a situation that happened to one woman who was a preacher in a church. A Bible school preacher. The grandfather had a church. But among all this. The last person you could ever believe to do evil would be a preacher. But you know the preacher, a woman that took care of Sunday school, taking care of the things of God, known in a neighborhood as a good woman, the woman ended up murdering, doing murder, committing murder on a young girl, and was sentenced to life imprisonment. Until today they asked the lady, what happened? That you are in, sitting in jail. What happened? She says, I don't understand. I don't know why I killed this little girl. I don't understand. Yes, because one, well, Satan sits and he desires certain people. The kingdom of darkness, they make meetings and they desire. They say, 
I chose this person. Some people are, are sorcerers today. Some people are used in voodoo as voodoo priests. They didn't desire it. They weren't born for that. But the enemy sits and he desires them to be there. The enemy sits and he chooses among the people on earth whom to destroy. Hallelujah. That is why the enemy says, Satan says, I have been to and fro the earth seeking whom to devour. I've been to and fro. I've been working back and forth looking for who will be my choice. Looking for who are you Satan's choice? You might say no. But the Bible says put on the whole armor of God. Bible says put on because that evil day will come. For you to be able to stand in the evil day. Brethren, as I'm telling you, that good days, God make it like that. The world operates like that. That there are times the world makes sure that you enjoy and after some time, a sorrow breaks in. Something comes to trouble you. Something comes to disturb you. Something comes to turn you, your heart to panic. That's how this world is designed to operate. God doesn't make it that on your 30 years on earth, your 50 years on earth, all you experience is enjoyment, happiness continuously. No, God hasn't designed the world like that. God has designed the world that after some time of enjoyment, the enemy comes. After some time of repose, evil will strike. This is how the world operates. Hallelujah. And so Simon Peter, let me read it for those who come. Jesus said to Simon Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as a weed. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, straighten thy brethren. So I'm going back talking about a board meeting, a board meeting that happened in the secret of secret, saying that Satan looked among many people and he chose Peter. Unknown to Peter, that is on the menu of Satan. That is on Satan's next agenda. Unknown to Peter. And the Lord told him, let me reveal to you. Don't be ignorant, uh, Simon. At this point of your life, there's a meeting going back. to the, for, There's a meeting behind closed doors in the heavens concerning your life. But Jesus said, I pray for you. I pray for you. That when you are converted, that your faith will not fail and that you will be converted. Hallelujah. It means, my dear brother and sister, not every prayer will stop problems. Not every problem, uh, prayer will stop the enemy from striking. Somebody has been to the fifth, the 39 man of God, 37 prophet, so that they should stop such calamity. When the enemy has desired you to save you as a weed, the only thing that will save you is prayers. The prayers will not stop it, but the prayers will make you stable in the midst of your temptation, in the midst of your trials, in the midst. Somebody go from prophet to prophet, so seed to so seed. Jesus says, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. It is, I have prayed for you and my prayer will stop it. You are waiting for a quick prayer. You are waiting for a, an instant miraculous prayer to get out of that situation. You are waiting to jump out of trouble real quick. But I'm telling you, you won't jump out real quick. Because there is a meeting, a board meeting that happened in a satanic place. It's a board meeting to shake in you as long as we are on this earth. Everybody will go through it. I said again that the world is designed that way. The world has been designed that you will not experience enjoyment continuously without tasting a little bit of pain, without tasting a little bit of trial. There's no way in this earth like that. There's no Bible that promises you that 24 on 7 for the next 60 years, it will be enjoyment. But it tells us that in the midst of the fire, God will be with you. In the midst of the trouble, God will fight for you. And in it, you come out better off than, than before. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So it says, Satan has desired you. Praise the Lord. And Satan's desire is to sift him. Have you ever seen uh, sifting of weed, ancient sifting of weed? For weed to be disconnected from its stock, from its plant when it is dry, it has to go through a squishing process. So when Satan wants somebody, he wants to 
pass that person through excruciating means, through some difficult process. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to pass Peter through excruciating this very Satan desired Judas Iscariot. And we saw what happened. This very Satan desired Peter. Both of them, but the Bible says, Jesus said he prayed for Peter, but he didn't pray for John the Baptist. Peter would have even become Judas Iscariot if the Lord did not stand the gap for Peter. Peter would have become Judas Iscariot. That is why you ask yourself, why did I do what I did? Why did this individual did what he did? Why did this believer act this way? But you don't understand that something sinister in the realm of the spirit is causing people's behavior to tilt negatively. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sifting in the weed is a terrible process. It's a process where they put the grain and the chaff and different items and they begin, you begin to toss it in the wind, toss it in the wind, toss it and the chaffs, they are being flown. You are being tossed to, tossed in life. Have you experienced it? My brother, and I'm not standing here to say what I've not experienced. I've been tossed by this enemy. I've been tossed. Bible said, put on the whole armor of God so that, that if you'll be able to stand in that evil day when the enemy will toss you, when trouble from trouble, when trial to another, when people will disconnect from you, when rumor will come, when everything you touch fail, when your hopes and dreams they become shattered. Jesus says, the enemy has desired to save you. Are you on their menu? You say, God forbid. I'm telling you, we can say God forbid as we like. But that everyone on earth will pass through the sifting of the enemy. It's a terrible process. It's an excruciating process. But God wants us to be prepared for it. We'll begin to see something. Jesus says, I have prayed for thee, that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen thy brethren. Why did Satan want Judas, uh, Peter? Because Satan has seen that Peter will be the leader of all the other people. He will be the leader of the disciple. Peter will be the one to carry the gospel to the four corners of the earth. Why are you going through the tussle, the tussle back and forth, being shaken by the wind, the shifting, the breaking, the crushing, the trials? The enemy has seen who you are. He has seen the power of God. He has seen the destiny that God has for you. And he has brought the shaking in your life to cause you to falter, to cause you to curse God, to cause you to doubt God, to cause you to take a different direction. Peter almost did it. Hallelujah. Jesus told him, I have prayed for you. Peter said, no, 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 you don't need to worry. If it means dying for you, I'm ready to die for you. He says, no, you don't need to talk about it. I cannot do that. Jesus says, you don't know. That I'm, what I'm saying is true. When the cock crows, the third time you will remember. Because you will deny me. Peter said, no, I'm ready to die for you. And Peter, remember this. Peter, remember this. When the cock crowed. And when Peter re remember this, he realized that something is going on. Before you know again, Satan took Peter to a place where he disconnected from his purpose. He disconnected from the crowds, from the other uh, disciples that he, it was his mission to put them together. Hallelujah. Peter discon disconnected from the people that he had to lead and he went back to fishing. Satan was trying to drag him out of his purpose, drag him out of his calling, drag him out of Christ and then do, do what? Maybe crush him or kill him. How many of us have backslidden? 
but we thank God we didn't die when we backslided. How many people are backslided and you saw them dying in their backslided mood? How many people disconnected from God when they were tossed by problems? How many people said they wouldn't go to church again? But how many of us are that part of our own belief? We did not let go. God did not let go on us. Despite at that point, God still held us and brought us back to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter backslided. Peter's backsliding was not because Peter liked it. There are many things you see in the Christian in the church. You don't know. You, you just said that's a bad sister. That's a bad brother. That's a bad pastor. You don't know if Satan is kicking them like a football, tossing them to and fro, shaking them in the wind, burning their head and crushing. They might be on the menu from spiritual discussion. Hallelujah. People, Mother Mary, all oh, this Peter who be used to be general, general of this gospel, Peter who used to lay on Jesus' uh, a body, who used to converse with Jesus. Look at him, he's back. He's back here at the beach with us. He's back fishing with us. He ain't going back. He ain't going back to what he used to do before. They didn't know that Peter being back to where he was was a plan of the enemy because the enemy does not want us to move in our purpose he wants us to go back to where we are coming from he wants us to go back to our village back to your country back to where you started back with the same friends with the same local miserable life he doesn't want us to move into our purpose praise the lord the bible says jesus says when you have been converted strengthen the, the brethren I want us to go there, go 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 there and let's see a little bit of shaking and I'll be back on this page going back to the book of Job chapter 1 and see what happened there's somebody called Job in the Bible the Bible didn't say so much of Job and Job's time, but the Bible only gives us a picture of shifting that uh, shifting that Job was going through. Shifting, being tossed, being lifted up, tossed left and right. This is something that Job experienced. The Bible said Job was a perfect man. We thought that when we become perfect, nothing can happen to us. We thought that when we obey God, the Bible said Job was perfect. He didn't sin. He was a shrewd evil. But can you imagine that there was discussion in heaven? The Bible says when the sons of God, they were in heaven for a discussion, the accuser came and he landed and God started talking. There are conversations going on in the spirit realm. They may be mentioning your name. God may be proud of you, but the enemy says, does Job like you for nothing? Haven't you protected him? Haven't you built a hedge around him? And God said, okay, this is him, have him. There are evil days that temptation will come on your life like a child of God. There are evil days that evil will strike as a child of God. And let's see the manner in which this young man, I mean this man who feared God, who, 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 who sacrificed, what happened to him? He started losing his, 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 his businesses. His finances was touched. Whereas his finances being touched, it is something that has been channeled in a board meeting in the heavenlies. His finances all that. You don't know what you do. You keep working. You don't see the money. You keep chasing money and money runs away. The business you invested, invested in is crushing. And then he touched Job's family. The children died. You start losing valuable possession. You start losing friends. People start running away from you. You start living an isolated life. And you start crying and asking God, what is happening to me? There must be an agenda in the realm of the spirit. There must be a, a, a something sinister, a meeting that has happened concerning your life at that time. When every hell starts breaking loose. And we see again, Job, he lost his house, lost his, 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 his health lost his health his health was touched 
when people believers start becoming sick, people start praying for them. They have quoted scripture. They are not getting better. They are moving from worse, better to worse. Their health is plunging down. Something may be sinister in the kingdom of darkness. Not because they have sinned. Not because of any evil they have done. But there are shakings that happen. There are testings. There are trials. For children of God at this time. So let's continue to see what Job, it happened to Job. A time came when Job and his wife, they could not dialogue like before. Job's relationship with his wife was destroyed. The wife didn't respect him again because he didn't have anything. That is, you see, divorce in couples that used to be intimate, that used to be role models. The couples, their relationships start fading away. You don't understand what is happening. It might be a shaking. Are you that spouse that will stand with your partner when they are going through shakings? Or you'll be the one to quickly break out of the relationship? Relationship because it don't look like what you signed for. It don't look like how you got into it. Are you that spouse that would check out quickly? Or you'll be the one to stand and say, whatever you call your spouse name, we are in this together. We'll stand in it. We will pray our way through. We will focus and get out of this mess together. Hallelujah. And so Job held and he lost everything. The Bible says when his four friends came to see him, they did not recognize Job. Yes, have you been in that time? Have you been humiliated? When the enemy calls for you, he humiliates you to a point, people will not recognize you. You who used to be beautiful, handsome, well-dressed, well-spoken. Oh my God, when people see you, they knew you. When people saw you, they know you are rich. When people see you, they know you're intellectual. Now you start talking stupidly. You start dressing like a beggar. You start begging some money. You start pleading with the landlord for rents. You start losing property. Hallelujah. The Bible said they could not recognize him. And so it calls in question why they started debating. Because Job's friends, they believe that God is the God of justice. That if you live a just life, nothing bad will happen to you. Not, and this debate was going on back and forth between Job and his friends. They believe in the system of justice. That when you are just, just things will happen to you. But Job tried to persuade them. He said, no, God doesn't operate like that. He says, can we receive good and not receive bitterness? Can we receive uh, um, good things? So it came to a point that Job took the case to God because the situation persisted. It became worse with Job. And Job came to a point that he started questioning God. Job started questioning God. But while Job was questioning God, he was afraid that he was sin. One part, one part of his heart was telling him, no, don't do that to God. You might be sinning. You might, you might throw the line. Hallelujah. Have your trouble led you to a place where you start diminishing the authority, the ability, the, the capability of God? Has your problem taking you to that place? That is where Satan wants you to get to. He wants you to question the integrity of God. He wants you to disbelieve God. He wants you to, to, to diminish God. He wants you to make God too small. He wants you to be unbelieving. And he even wants you to back off from God. Hallelujah. Those are the intents. Why he is shifting people. Why he is shifting people. Hallelujah. And Job God came to Job at the last minute and he began showing Job. He says, no, Job, this is not how the world operates. To cut the long story short, God did what? He restored Job back. Hallelujah. There is an end to a shifting. in him. There's an end when the enemy gets to shift people. I think the first thing he will attack if it's a prayer person, he will attack the prayer life. He will attack the person's worship. He will attack the person's church going. The person doesn't go to church. The person doesn't read the Bible anymore. He will attack the person's giving. The person doesn't give to God. He will, if it's a church, he will attack the church itself. The church foundation will be shaken in. And people will be mocking. Little they don't know. Jesus said, when you don't call anybody a fool... Have you read that in the Bible? It says, don't say, Raka. 
Don't catch somebody raka. Because you don't know where that person is who raka. You don't know where that person is a fool at that time. Maybe he's in, a, uh, uh, he's an, in an, an eternal discussion. Maybe his name is being mentioned or being sifted by the enemy. Don't mock at people. Don't mock at people in their downest moment. You may not understand everything, but if you don't understand something, you just shut your mouth. But don't mock at people at their painful moment. When somebody is crying, when somebody is in lack, when somebody is homeless, when somebody is divorced, when somebody's child is in jail, when somebody has lost their job, it's not the time to laugh. This is the time to do what? Pray. Hallelujah. Jesus says, but I've prayed for you. Said the solution to shifting is what? Prayer. Wherever you are, just say prayer. He says, but I've prayed for you that your faith, hallelujah, your faith, Satan is going after your faith. Satan is after my faith. Satan is after my faith. When my faith is destroyed, I can be captured. When my faith that Jesus is, my healer is destroyed, sickness my ravish me. When my faith is destroyed, that God can be my provider, that I will languish in lack. Satan is going after the faith. He says, I prayed for you, hallelujah, that when thou art converted, so I will convert and you will strengthen the brethren. So Jesus is telling you that whatever you're going through, you will come out of it. You may not come out at your time. You may not come out at your desired time. But it says when you tell the enemy that I have, you know, you might have done this to us. But when I get out of it, you will know me. When I get out of it, the world will know me. When I get, because you will get out of it. Jesus says, when, it doesn't mean it will swallow you. It doesn't mean it will remain forever. It doesn't mean our shiftings will remain forever. You will not die in that shifting. Satan will not, his desire shall not be completely successful. Satan may desire you, and when God permits him, the enemy will think he will have you. But no, God says, you will come out of it because of prayer. You will come out. That is why you need to hang out with people who pray. That's why if you are an intercessor, you need to pray. If you are a church, your church needs to pray. Your prayers may be an, an answer to somebody. Your prayers, while you are here praying and interceding, you might be answering somebody shifting who lives in Asia. Somebody shifting who lives in London. Somebody shifting who lives in Africa. Your prayers will cause God to make somebody standing. Hallelujah. He said, but I've prayed for you. Hallelujah. That your faith fail not. He says, and when you're converted, you'll be the one to take over the brethren. When you're converted, you'll be a leader. Your testimony will encourage others. When you've been through the shifting, you'll be the one to pull people out of the rubble. You'll be the one to pull people out of the same scenario. You'll be the one to strengthen others. That's why when you're going through problem, your problem is not for you. When God bails you out of the problem, God wants to use your testimony to bring a message to somebody. Hallelujah. Your testimony may be a key that will unlock the prison of somebody. Your testimony may be a key to unlock. Why will you say you are in Christ? Why will you say you've been in Christ 10 years? So that will ask you, what is your experience? It is your experience in Christ that will tell us who you are. What you've experienced for the gospel. What you've experienced, the difficulties when you come out and you tell people these things, they will know that you've been through fire. They will know that if you say God is good, you mean it. When you, you know when you pray, you mean it. They will know that whatever you say, you mean it because you've tested God. You've tested all the sites and you've seen it and your experience becomes real. We also begin to see, as I'm rounding up because I won't take our time, the book of James, James chapter 1. 
Hallelujah. I was talking to the Lord today. He says, he says, James 1 verse 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. I tell God that no, I, I'm not counting it joy. It's unpleasant. It is unpleasant. Shifting is unpleasant because I've been through it. Hallelujah. You've been through it. When you have kids, you can't feed them. When you have bills, you can't pay them. When you have a marriage, it's shaking. When you have a family, you can't help them. When you have a dream, you can't accomplish them. When you have some desires, you can't meet them. When you have people that hate you, that you didn't do anything to them. When people lie about it's unpleasant. James is saying count it all joy. James is saying you should count it. No, God, I'm not counting it all joy. What will I do in the midst of this trial? Just stay positive in it. Believe him because God has said you will come out and you'll be, a, you'll be used to help others. You'll be used to, as a testimony, as a thermometer, you'll be used to strengthen others. God will take you out. Hallelujah. So while you are in it, just know that the Bible says, knowing this, that the trials of your faith work at what? Patience. It says, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and wanting nothing. Hallelujah. He said, knowing that the trials of your faith, it has something. When you have been blown, when the wind has been blown, when the wind is blown, at that form, at the beginning form, it has leaves, it has uh, branches, it has its own stock, it has its comb and everything. But through the process of sifting, the weave comes out tiny, refined excellence, and its price is different. Its value becomes very exceeding. The enemy may think that why he's passing us through what we are passing through is to destroy us. Bible says it will work together for your good. Hallelujah. The enemy thinks that what he's doing to you is he enjoys in the laugh in hell. The laugh in the kingdom of darkness. When you cry, but when God takes you out of it, you will become something. You become David who said, I killed a lion. I killed a tiger and you uncircumcised feelings that I will slaughter you. When the Lord has taken you through those shifting and you see the next one coming, you will not panic like you used to panic. You will not be a friend like you used to because you've been trained to be a giant killer you've been trained you remember that if god brought me through that he will still bring me out of this if i could get into that trouble and i came out if i could be homeless and now i'm not only homeless but i own a house if i could be a pedestrian but now i'm not only a pedestrian i'm a car owner and i give cars to people then what we got not take me through. Hallelujah. The enemy thinks that the temptation, that the trouble that you're going through is to kill you. Bible says, uh, you know something good will come out of this. Uh, something good. Yes, it may look messy, but something good we come out of this. It may look like I am dead. It may look at I am like this. This is the last stop. But God hasn't said no. With God, all things are possible. And we come out of this refined and better than I was in the past. Hallelujah. God has says, when you come out of it, somebody is praying for you that you don't know her. A church is praying for you, you don't know her. A widow is praying for you that you don't know her. A pastor is praying for you that you don't know her. An intercessor is praying for you that you don't know her. And much more. The Bible says Jesus is our intercessor. Jesus is mentioning your name in his prayers. When you're going through that because you have to come out of it. You don't have to die in it. It says, and when you come out, you will strengthen others. The world will, will hear from you. Others will learn from you. You'll be an example. The enemy will demarcate you from the rest of the people. He will know you've attained a certain height that others fail to attain, that others fall back, but you've crossed the rank. Hallelujah. So whatever you may be going through, if you might be through a sifting, we can pray for you. We, you may not have a quick fix. When you are in a sifting. But our prayers will do what? Make sure you go through it. 
Make sure your faith will stand. Make sure that you come up better than ever before. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You cannot be in that mess and come out and God doesn't honor you. You cannot be in that mess. Everybody is naming their kid Peter today. When Peter was later on converted, Peter became the leader of the movement. Peter carried the church on its shoulder and took the gospel to the, to, to the far and high and the rank and fire. Peter took the gospel to high places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peter is used as an example today. Don't, what you are in, you will be used as an example. You will be used to say a defeated cancer. I defeated that virus. I defeated um, that death. I defeated a case in the prison. And if I defeated that, you can do it. God will use you as a leader. In fact, for God to use you to strengthen others, you must go through something. If you want to be used by God, you have to go through something in life. God said you will be the one to strengthen miss you. You must pass through a process that will pull strength and muscles in your life. You go through crushing periods where you are crying, periods where you want to give up, periods that you just say, let me die, oh God. Periods that you doubt that God says he's doing that to build strength in you so that you can strengthen the brethren, hallelujah. For you to be a leader, you, are, you have to be tough. If you don't want to be a leader, you will stay in your shifting. If you don't want to be used by God, you stay in your shifting. The enemy will save you and save you and save you and torso you for the next 10 years. He will enjoy doing it. But if you want to stand in faith that in the midst of your trials, your faith doesn't waver, then you will come out to be the leader that God will use to strengthen. I can't stand here speaking if I tell you what I've been through. If I tell my mother what I've been through, have, she will have high blood pressure that will go, go all the way up. You can't stand to lead if you've not been through things. If the enemy has not sifted you. But when the sifting comes, when you, you are being sifted, flipped, up and down, up and down, the grain that comes out, that weed that comes out, it's not sold at the same price as the entire band that came in the beginning. Because the entire wheat that came contains the leaf, contains the chaff, contains gravels, contains stones, impurity. Until it weaves you, the weaves you, and then the final product comes. Hallelujah. You are at your stage. A final product must come out of your life. It is an unpleasant situation. Any product that you see in the store look beautiful. But if it tells you what it has been through, if that car that you're driving tells you what it has been through, if those how the house you're living through tells you the hammering that it has been through, the noise, the shattering, everything it has been through, if money tells you what it has been through to become money, then, then you will know. You are on your way to your final product. But you have to go through some of these things because God wants to use you to strengthen others. God wants to use you to be a voice in your family. The enemy thinks crushing you, shifting you will be your destruction. It happened to Jesus. The Bible says, said, if Satan knew, he would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He said that he, if he knew, he would not have demanded him. He thought that crucifying him would have been, would be the end. He thought that sifting Jesus by humiliating him through the cross, all those process cross, beating, judgment hall, nakedness, witnesses against him was to destroy Jesus. And Jesus in his wisdom, the Bible says he did not open his mouth because he knew that this is shifting is for his resurrection. That in three days he would resurrect. Satan thought that was the requiem mass for Jesus. He thought that there was the end for Jesus. But heaven knew that after this, there will be a lifting. Hallelujah. Are you in your shifting? Have you been demanded? It's not only you I'm talking. Maybe your sister or somebody in your family is in shifting. You want to join us so that we can pray for that individual who is been in this pit for too long, whom the enemy is tossing back and forth. It may be a family, a relative, a friend that you know. Do you want? If you, let me know if you want us to pray for them. 
Let me know if you want us to stand a gap and begin to pray for those that are going through those demands from the enemy. I begin to pray. I begin to pray, Lord. I begin to pray. I begin to pray for those that are being winnowed by the enemy. For those that are being tossed. For those whose career are, are, are a mess. Those whose health are under attack by the enemy. Those whom the enemy has desired to destroy. Those whom the enemy has chosen, has called to use as an exemplary for disgrace. Jehovah God will begin to mention their names tonight. We begin to ask you like you prayed for Peter. You are the chief intercessor. We begin to intercede for the family. I don't know their names right now, but you know their name. You know their location. I pray some of them have been in this back and forth for many years. Oh God, I pray for their faith to be boldened, to be emboldened, their belief system to rise up. I begin to pray, oh God, for them to begin to see you acting. I begin to pray for you to pull them out. I begin to pray for them to be bold. I begin to pray that at this time the enemy will not take glory in that situation, but that you will walk in them and bring them out at your time. In the name of Jesus, I also begin to pray for them that some of them have to be leaders. Some of them have books to write. Some of them have message to share to the world. Some of them have testimonies. Some of them have a band of people that they have to lead. It shall not fall short on them. They shall fulfill their purpose, oh God. They shall complete their mission, oh God. In the name of Jesus, I begin to put your mark on their head. I begin to send your angels, your angels to help your angels right now. Let them be dispatched in the four corners of the earth where these individuals are for rescue, for assistance, for direction, for guidance, for boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And Lord, like you restore Peter to a higher height, I begin to pray for them. Like you restore Job back to everything he lost and you multiplied it. The Bible says he was more richer than before. I begin to pray what your people have lost, the glory that they have lost, the reputation that they have lost, the family and loved ones they have lost, the friends they have lost, the jobs that they have lost, the businesses that they have lost, the time that they have lost. Oh God, let them recover it. Give, reclaim it and gather it in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, I thank you for restoring them back to their original glory and into their destiny. Thank you, Father God, for answering us. We pray this day in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If this broadcast, you believe, will answer somebody's question, then you share it on the world. If this broadcast would change somebody's story, share it on your world. You are not sharing it for our glory. You are sharing it because you are an evangelist. Because God wants to use you to strengthen others. So, so share it to console somebody who may be shifted at this time. And let the person's faith be strengthened to come out of their situation. God bless you as we'll be meeting again next week, same time on Wednesday. God bless you. We're inviting you for a Sunday service at 10 o'clock. God bless you all. Bye.